Tom here from Lauren Systems, and we're going to talk about SFP Plus and 10 gig connectors and DAC and optical. If you want to learn more about my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there's a hire us button at the top. If you'd like to continue on the discussion or just talk about whatever on our forums related to business and tech, forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you go for that. Also, we take suggestions for videos there, and I will have a discussion of why or why I won't do it. That happens a lot. 10 gig SFP plus connectors. So we have a few different setups here. I needed 10 gig in the studio, so we ran a Cat6 cable over to the studio, popped it over here, and got it plugged in, and we're connected to this MikroTik switch at 10 gig. I do have a separate review of the MikroTik switch. I have a separate review of the 10 gig Unify switch that it's connected to with an RG45 connector, uh, UTP. Now, UTP is great, but there is some disadvantages of it. So this is the connector, and we'll actually start at this one right here that we're using, the QSP Tech for Ubiquity. Even though it's plugged in a micro tech, it works perfectly fine, even though they do have other ones for like Netgear, Juniper, HP, Cisco. I went and grabbed the uh, micro tech um, switch and the Unify adapter, and I figured, hey, we'll see if they work. Now, why is that even an issue? You're, you don't have this issue, obviously, with uh, standard RG45 UTP cable, is because um, some companies, and Cisco is notorious for this, really care which SFP adapters they have. Good news is both Unify and Mikrotik from the testing I've done don't seem to care which ones they have in there. So sometimes these have to be, have special firmware on them to make them compatible with the particular switch. Uh, but you can buy them like that. You can buy a Cisco one at one end and have the other end match the type of switch that you're plugging into if you have a mixed environment of different switches. But this is what we're using, and someone will point out right away that it runs hot, and they're not wrong, and I wanted to show that. It's currently running at 54C when it's under heavy transfer. I've seen it hit 59 uh, when in heavy usage. But it's rated all the way to 70, so that doesn't seem to be a problem, unless, of course, you have a high ambient temperature to start with, and, well, then you may have a problem. But according to the specs in here, it's good up to 70 right here for an operating temperature, and... I haven't seen it get above 60 when I was doing like full 10 gig transfers. So a couple of things we have, and while we're here on Amazon page, I have some of these adapters. I really like this company, 10G Tech. We've been buying a lot of their stuff. We have had no failures out in the field, and we've had no failures here testing them in the labs. Um, and for a 10 gig transceiver, 20 bucks, not bad price here, $20.99 as of January. I just purchased another one because uh, I needed one for this demo. Um, we have bought other ones in bulk from other uh, vendors. So I only purchased one of this and from this particular one in January. Some of the other ones I've had for a while. I don't recall everywhere I bought them. Then we have these DAC cables from 10G Tech. Uh, we've purchased a lot more than two times because I did my rack video almost two years ago or a year ago with uh, 10G with these DAC cables and I have a video on that in Unify, but uh, these work really well. Now DAC cable has a disadvantage of only going up to seven meters, but has the advantage of being really, really low in terms of power draw, temperature, and latency. That's because there's a lack of media conversion that's going on. You're basically taking from one switch to another, almost as raw as possible, and therefore you have a very low latency just because of the speed conversion. Now, someone will probably link uh, to some old article that uh, is shared where there's a discussion on this. Now, one thing to take in mind is that old, and I bring that up, not that old articles aren't relevant, but sometimes uh, they have to take into account that electronics have become faster, so the latency differences may not be as big as they used to be, but I don't have any way to absolutely measure that. I've spent plenty of time reading some discussion forums. Um, I just don't have the right tooling to measure the latency. Ping times seem to be about the same. I'm Maybe one day I'll, get, I'll find a way to really dig into that particular answer. And you'll notice I'm connected with these mono price. A uh, CAT6 Ethernet patch cable is really thin. I've done a review of these, but yes, these work no problem. They're CAT6 cables and they do work at 10 gig. I have no problems transferring uh, 10 gig on this with this. It makes it really nice and light and opposed to a bigger, bulkier uh, cable. That being said, let's get into the adapters themselves. So your LC connector for the fiber that we have here, which by the way, is, I think I showed, let me make sure we talk about this real quick. The fiber cable, LC fiber, 10 gig duplex OM3. It's important that you get the right type of cable for this. And I bring this up because you may find a really great deal on these orange cables you found on sale. Uh, orange usually is jacketed orange for OM1 and you may have problems over distance doing 10 gig on those, uh, but you want to at least get an OM2 cable, kind of that future proofing and whatnot. But just uh, make note of that when you're finding or if you happen to be hunting down used to build your lab. Now, 
This just clicked into a one gig connector. This just clicked into a 10 gig connector. The ends are the same on both of these. That's one thing about the one gig and 10 gig. They're not anything different when it comes to the way they work. Same thing with this, one gig and 10 gig on SFP or SFP plus are all the same ends. Now you can plug a SFP plus into an SFP and you may have limited mileage and how far you'll get. And I bring that up because this will work if you force the link, so this is a 10 gig switch, but this is only a one gig SFP behind me. I can make the link down to right here. Whoops, plug it in right way. Click and click here. Whoops, you know, you only got, it's like USB. There's only two ways, but somehow I got it wrong twice. We'll go over here and look at the Microtech. And you see it plugged in and it recognizes the one meter copy in there, but there's not a link. And the reason there's no link is because we have to force it down to one gig. So we set it one gig here to match. Hey, link status, light came on, we're linked, but we're only linked at one gig. So you have to force compatibility. That doesn't necessarily work as well with the optical. So if you wanna match the optical together, you're gonna to have to plug this in and force the optical kind of the same way. But if you plug the 10 gig optical into here, I don't think it'll, it won't even light up when I tested it. There may be some switches that have other things, but for the most part, buy the one that matches the hole it's going into. That's the, <laughs> that's my takeaway from this. Uh, these are also kind of nice if you wanna see exactly how an SFP connector goes in. We'll actually zoom in real quick here to show if you can see the little click part. So you pull this, little cable at the back and it unlocks it. So they lock in and this locks them out. So that's one thing about SFP that's really nice is uh, when they plug in, not that I recommend it as a handle, but they do snap in pretty clever. The way it works on the optical ones, they go in, whoops, I'm getting good at putting them in wrong. And they don't come out easy, but they have a little latch, which we'll show right here. You pull down the latch and they slide out and it latches what's actually pulling the release to get those in and out. So what about these guys? How do they come out? Well, these are, and I'm not, I don't really need to zoom in much, but these just go like this and that pops them out of their spot. So when these go in, they click in and then to get them out, just pull the little lever down and they slide out. Now it may not be that practical to buy a bunch of these, one for cost, these, are about $40 a piece, uh, $43 I think it said on Amazon. And while they do 10 gig, it does come like I said, the expense of heat. But if you need to get 10 gig over to here, this seems like an easier way to do it. Now, the other option would have been running an optical cable. And you can get these patch cables prefabbed or if you have the right tools and you're able to splice fiber, yes, you can splice these yourself. But running them like this, uh, buying a prefab one, pretty common and if you got to get it down the hall or distances that exceed what you can do with UTP cable, fiber optics, a great choice. Uh, we don't necessarily install fiber. People ask me to do a few fiber videos. We contract that out because we don't do it very frequently and we have a partner company we work with to actually run it across the building because once something exceeds the distance you can run with your standard copper cable, these are a great solution. These are also not a bad solution when you want to get it, like I said, just down the hall for 10 gig and maybe you don't want to run uh, Cat6. But Cat6 right now, the price has come down so far between Cat6, even Cat6A, that it's actually probably one of the cheaper options when in terms of cable. And it's of course, without having fiber equipment, which good fiber splicing equipment is going to cost you a few dollars and require a little bit more skill than just crimping an end on a cable. This is actually really easy to do. Um, I hate doing it, but it's at least not difficult. So those are some of your options when you're connecting a 10 gig. Now for all the stuff that's going to end up connected in the studio here and the review, we're going to be using the DAT cables for everything else. So I don't mind plugging in the, um, a loop <laughs> and plugging in each device over to here at DAT cables and lining them up because there's gonna go short distances to get it on here. And this will be that backbone, so to speak, that carries over the 10 gig to get it where it needs to go on there. So these are some of the choices I have. I'll leave links to all these. I didn't have any problems with them though. Uh, for those wondering about these, they, other than getting warm, I've had it running for a couple days. Matter of fact, what I had done for testing was plug my computer in, which has the Asus card in it that supports 10 gig. It connects at 10 gig perfectly fine on this. Uh, that's what I was able to get this to reach 59. Once it did hit 60 with this setting in the back, 
uh, with an ambient temperature of about 75 degrees in my server room right now. When I, well, actually, I should not now, but when I did the test, but that's usually what the temperature is on there. My computer connected at 10 gig, then this was connected via a uh, DAC to that unified 10 gig switch. And other than once I really pushed the data, seeing that warm temperature on there, it never got hotter. And I let it run for untold amount of time. Also, people ask about that ASUS adapter in my computer. I, I've seen someone says it thermally throttles. I have not witnessed it. Uh, it consistently ran 10 gig for, I tested it for 30 minutes pulling data, and I always edit all my videos on this. All this actually gets copied, uh, even from this computer, gets copied to the FreeNAS server, which is connected 10 gig to my computer, and that's what I'm actually, my use case or how I run that, and it works perfectly fine. Now, if there's enough interest in it, and if I have the time to do it, um, a question has come up before of, do I need CAT6 to run it? Now, I know what the recommended specs are, and if you wanna dive deep into cable specs, I have a wonderful interview with someone who actually spends time writing the specs. That being said, yes, you can actually do CAT5 at 10 gig, uh, provided it's over short distances. It's not recommended. This is not something I would ever do in production, but if you're wondering, will it connect? Um, that's actually the cabling that was in the wall we were gonna replace it in my office and it's connected at 10 gig and I have it connected at 10 gig of this. Granted, it's uh, I think about 25 feet of cable and that's running perfectly fine as CAT5 e cable. I have not had any issues, any drops and it's been working like this since I put that card in over, whenever I got that Unify switch, I think it's over a year ago now, a year and a half ago that no problems running at 10 gig. I do highly recommend using CAT6 cable and when we're doing anything for clients or in production, it's always gonna be uh, done properly. We don't like those type of things that cause you to chase your tail uh, sorting that out. Now, one last thing I'll comment. Someone had asked if these support two and a half gig. Not that I'm aware of. I didn't see any way to get these to do the two and a half and five gig. And now the two and a half gig standard is supported over short distances over CAT5e. I actually have a whole chart. Well, there's a chart on Wikipedia, it's not my chart. And they do say that two and a half gig base T and five base T well, works over cat five E and cat six E over distance. Um, but that being said, I, this doesn't seem to support it. And the Unify switch also that I could find um, does not support it. I don't know if it's a, if a future firmware will ever offer the support for it, but when it comes to link negotiation, it only had the options for um, 100, one gig, or 10 gig connections, and that's all that was in the Unify switch as well. So I'll leave links to the two switch reviews that I did for both of those. Uh, these work perfectly fine in the Unify. All these optical cables work fine in the Unify. Um, the 10 gig and one gig ones, and the 10 G tech ones, and this random one that I found in a box, um, all of them work perfectly fine with each other. I have not had any problems, generally speaking, I mixed with this uh, NHR versus this 10 G tech one, different brands of uh, optical connectors, they are standard, so they should work, but ideally, if you're building out your network, buy the same ones and save any type of headache on there. But just be careful and pay close attention to what you're doing. And of course, I've talked about this before and I'll bring it up one last time or one more time uh, in this video. This is a Intel 10 gig card. So if you're trying to start playing around with 10 gig, this is all of about $50 on eBay. The seller claimed it was new. It certainly doesn't have any scuff marks on it. Uh, mileage may vary on where you get them on eBay, but overall, they work really well. They um, This is also compatible with, you know, like the DAC cables or the optical cables if you want 10 gig connections and you're looking for something, you know, a little bit less expensive. And this gives you dual 10 gig that you could potentially bond together for even more fun. That's a whole separate video. All right, and thanks. And once again, I'll leave links to all these little connectors and all the ones I have so you can see what may fit for your network and your network needs. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.